Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, and we're joined by our next guest and reporter, Mark Z, President of Mark Z Legal Staffing. Mark, good to see you. John, good to see you. Great to be on the show, and uh, always um, great to uh, to interact and be part of your conversation. Well, I know you've got a topical, as always, uh, topic to speak of, something timely and topical uh, for our Mark Z moment. What is it that you want to uh, discuss this morning? Thanks. Thanks, John. So what I thought I'd talk about was the coming back, but really strategic coming back as employers um, strategically have plans. We talked about um, in the past um, employers planning, not just um, for the year, not uh, just for six months or the month, but planning in, in, um, in stages. Um, one, of the, one of the things that employers and employees should consider how I'll come back. In other words, um, when should I come back now that the vaccine is gonna be coming ultimately um, in my stage? And then when I come back, will it be fully in the office? Will it be a combination? Can I still work remotely? And based on a lot of people that we've talked to, who were employers and employees or consultants, um, what we advise is at minimum for the first year, have a balance. You can't really go from requiring employees every day being in the office to every day now, which is what happened, the other extreme not being in the office to going back fully in the office. Some employers, particularly small companies and small law firms, have had people continually come to their office during COVID, um, socially distanced, they've had all the procedures in place, but the bulk of the organizations and companies have had people work remotely at least three to four days a week. A lot of the bigger law firms have suggested and have had people come in maybe one day a week just to at least connect with the people in the firm because you need that connection. But again, for the most part, some people, I would say at least half based on our information have been working at home full time. So our advice is work collaboratively together and figure out employer and figure out employee what works in terms of coming back. Our suggestion is maybe it's minimum one day, but probably two days working remotely and three days in the office. And that way you, pre you predict um, and pick strategic days where you'll be there, most of the team will be there. And by having enough days, you'll be exposed to, to the rhythm of the company, rhythm of your team and having your, um, your ear to the ground of what's going on. It is really difficult, and I've talked to a lot of um, employees on their side working fully remotely, psychologically, they feel disconnected. Um, Zoom has helped, but it's not the same as being there. And they really want to be in the office. They really want to see people. They really want to act, um, act in terms of um, the connection being part of everything. So you're, you're really touching on a really important point, and I guess I put it under the fabric of re-entry. Re-entry is never pretty, right? Um, you know, I mean, let's think about space travel. You know, if rockets come back to Earth, there's always a chance of, it's, it's sort of, there's some turmoil created, right, upon re-entry. And so right. I think what, what I'm, I'm hearing you say is you're cautioning employees to say, hey, don't expect it to go smoothly. Have a plan. Right, because right. reentry doesn't always happen. As you know, the, the beginning of the pandemic, the front end of the pandemic, as you talked about, was an extreme shift. Everybody was forced into it. Right, we had a lockdown essentially, or at least a very you know strong direction, and so many people, you know, that was abrupt. Um, your reentry doesn't have to be abrupt if you can plan it out. And I think what you're suggesting is one size doesn't fit all. Um, because right. I think I think what we run the risk of is the opposite happening, right? If we go to a, a, a harsh reentry, um, we may have rebound where people will be, uh, you know, not engaging at work because they're wondering about what's going on with their kids or the rest of the world. And I think in the in the larger context, we're also entering a point where there's still a lot of unknowns. 
right? Yes, Correct. we understand people are getting vaccinated, but we still don't know whether people that are vaccinated can carry and, you know, infect others. We still don't really have a horizon for, you know, as shocking as it is, uh, there's such a huge variance among states. You know, I've heard of 40 year olds getting vaccinated in some parts of the country and 80 year olds in other parts don't have any clue when they're getting vaccinated. Right. Um, so, you know, just recognizing that there's so many moving variables that you really have to individualize this and have as always, communication, those conversations, you know, what works well for you, what works well for the employer, um, and, and, and have that dialogue. Correct. Have dialogue. If you're an employee, have a plan to go to the employer. Here are days that I'd like to be at the office. Now, what's interesting, John, another ripple, and a lot of people think, okay, um, having the flexibility, working from home is a good thing for, for, um, for example, working mothers. Um, and what's interesting, um, which we've seen, is it's not necessarily a positive. First of all, obviously, child care um, because of the schools. But the big thing is, um, for example, in September, four times the amount of um, um, four times the amount of women to men left the workforce because they couldn't take it anymore. Because what happens is when you're working remotely, um, companies and clients and employers think you're available 24 seven. And it's tougher to cut and set the boundaries. So returning to work not only um, will help in terms of the connection, but it will reset some boundaries for people, work and personal boundaries, which are really lacking now. You know, yeah, I don't you know. know you, 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 yeah, you raise a really good point. I mean, I think people are are subject to, you know, or or are under the guise that, you know, just because I can reach out to you electronically means that I can hassle you seven days a week, twenty four hours a day. And, right. Uh, and uh, you know, again, as an employer, it's incumbent upon you to be mindful of that. Um, and uh, you know, I. We got a couple of guys listening on, but I, I try and be mindful of it. I'm not sending things when it comes to my mind. I'm sending it when it's conducive to work hours, uh, because I think we are in a 24-7 world. And that's sort of the expectation that's been placed upon everybody. Right. I, I mean, when we push things out, being cognizant of that. The other thing is, um, if you do that, it creates it's expectations onto expectations onto expectations. So if an employer or a client says, okay, at eight o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night, he's gonna respond, then maybe I could send something at 10. So it really, um, it really is important for employers, employees, or even clients and just organizations to really figure out a balance for um, working remote and setting boundaries for being in the office. And you, and you must, Mark, in your uh, travels and in the role that you're involved in, you must come into contact a lot with uh, HR professionals and certainly in the larger firms and uh, recruiters. Um, I would imagine that uh, HR directors, at least what I'm seeing is, you know, they are so immersed right now in figuring out all the moving parts and, um, you know, guidelines coming from, from the state, you know, even density, how many people we can have in an office. And uh, I know in some cases, and this is predominantly in clients that have been on site right through, um, HR directors are almost like traffic managers. You know, they're trying to figure out, all right, who's in the office on what days, how many people we can have, what's our density, what's our capacity. And, you know, they're almost like GMs in restaurants now, uh, trying to figure out how to schedule people and make sure that their density is, is, is correct. And so they've taken on a whole other uh, area of responsibility that historically was kind of, you know, it, it wasn't really something that entered on their radar. Um, so, you know, all that complexity has to be figured out, discussed and talked about at the senior levels so that your managers understand what the restrictions are and, and right. are, are collaborating um, to, to not uh, come into violation of codes. Um, and, you know, you cited a, 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 a number of, of people that are working remotely. Um, you know, it, it sometimes feels like everybody's working remotely, but then, you know, you get on the roads and you see, well, no, maybe traffic's about 50% what it was. So that would just tell you anecdotally, well, about 50 cent of people are still probably going to their offices uh, every day. And so right. it, you know, th those things are, are uh, it's all newness that has to be navigated. But back to your earlier point is you need to have that conversation. You need to have that plan in place. You need to strategize about what works best for your culture, for your organization, for your environment in order to get the work done. Correct. Correct. So 
what what uh, what are you seeing people uh, talking to uh, new prospective employees about? Are they having that dialogue around you know what is the culture, what is the current environment, what are the long term expectations? I know when Mark Z is involved, you're encouraging them to have that, but is that really on people's radar? Or are they thinking that way? Absolutely. When we're when people are interviewing, they want to know right away: Will it be remote originally? And then if it's not fully remote. Um, what what is the expectation of me coming in the office? Um, and then even the whole interviewing process, um, it is probably about 85% um, by a phone call, then Zoom, and then um, about 20 to 25% in the end, some kind of meeting. But still, I would say um, 75 to 80%, we're still getting full hires over Zoom without the people ever meeting. So it's still happening. I think it's gonna, um, it's gonna start changing, especially again, as um, the population, employee population gets vaccinated, but that's gonna be probably the norm in terms of Zoom, in terms of phone call. It's just um, not worth it because a lot of employers have to continue to grow and they're busy. And at the same time, um, um, they want to be careful, as you would say, as far as their numbers in the office, people feeling they need to come into the office and um, and being able to manage their talent. And, and I would think the larger issue that a lot of companies are wrestling with is does the model work for them to be largely remote and what are the implications for the businesses? You know, there's a lot of people who are sitting there saying I've got a lot of overhead tied up in my in my rent uh, agreements and we've sat empty for a year, but our numbers aren't off that dramatically. So. Um, you know, is that something that, uh, you know, is the type of thing that, that how are they weighing it? You know, it's a larger strategic issue for them. Can they continue to do remote work? Um, and how does that align with uh, prospective employees that perhaps want to remain remote for various reasons or vice versa? So all right. important questions, all important considerations. And uh, as always, Mark, a pleasure. Thank you for bringing Mar Mark Z's moment and uh, bringing to light something that uh, is, is real and, and uh, timely and topical that people are dealing with. Thank you, John. Great to be here um, and great to, um, to share um, our thoughts with the listening audience. So as always, if you want to tell our listeners and uh, viewers how to get in touch with you uh, when they have uh, any, any sort of recruiting and uh, uh, hiring needs, uh, Mark Z is always available. Well, thank you, John. It, um, so first of all, people can go on to our website, um, markzlegal.com, M-A-R-C-Z legal.com, 617-338-1300. Or if you forget everything, just Google Mark Z, M-A-R-C, and the letter Z, and we come right up. Excellent. Always a pleasure. And just let me make sure that they're not reaching out to you at 2 a.m. Actually, it's okay if they send you an email, but please don't call and text. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds we'll good. Respond if I'm up. <laughs> there you go. And you probably are. Good to see you, Mark. <laughs> Thanks and, again, uh, John. Take care. Great. We'll be right back with another segment on Radio Entrepreneurs.